Hey friends, as we work through the book of James, we'll discover there are not a lot of passages that speak directly to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but I'm starting to think it's one of the most important books in the Bible on the resurrection, and here's why. Early in the Gospels, we see that Jesus' family did not believe in him. Uh, it's John chapter 7, verse 5, that tells us his uh, family didn't, they were unbelievers, they didn't believe. And Mark, over in Mark chapter 3, 20 and 21, even talks about the family saying things like he's, he's out of his mind. So they're marked out as unbelievers in the gospel stories. And yet there in the book of Acts, we see that James is a very committed follower of Jesus. Acts 1, he's praying with the church. Acts 15, he takes a leadership role of some kind at the Jerusalem council. And most importantly, by the time he writes the book of James, he says something like, James, a servant of God in Jesus Christ. So how do you go from not believing in Jesus to being a committed follower to the point where you call yourself a doulos, a slave of Jesus? Well, the answer is found, I think, in 1 Corinthians 15, where Paul recounts the resurrection of Jesus. And then says at one point in there, he appeared to, appeared to Cephas in the 12. And then he appeared to James and then the apostles. Now, it's interesting that that seems to be the turning point in James' life. The resurrection of Jesus is what convinced him and caused him to give his heart to Christ. The resurrection is the power of salvation in that sense. So how important is the resurrection of Jesus? Well, let's talk about it from this perspective. In our modern world, a lot of people see the moral teachings of Jesus as like the front door of Christianity, that you become a Christian by, by either agreeing or not agreeing to go through the front door of, of the moral teachings of Jesus. So you read about what Jesus is about family or maybe power, sex, and money. And if we agree with Jesus, we say, well, I agree with him on these teachings. Uh, I'll consider that maybe he did rise from the dead. So we get to the resurrection through the front door of the moral teachings. That's usually how people reject or accept Jesus. But in the first century, it was completely the opposite of that. Nobody came to Jesus because of the moral teachings. Nobody read the Sermon on the Mount and thought those are really nice teachings, and then I'll go investigate if he rose from the dead. They came to Jesus through the resurrection by putting their faith first and foremost in the resurrection of the Son of God. And then, after believing the resurrection, along with that would come the moral teachings of Jesus. So here's a thought. If Jesus didn't rise from the dead, to ask questions like, what did Jesus say about power, sex, and money? I would say, who cares? If he didn't rise from the dead, his opinion is probably as worth as much as any other first century religious leader. But if he did rise from the dead, then we want to think and embrace all of his moral and doctrinal teachings. And so the, everything rises and falls on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you're investigating Christianity, I know the temptation to start with the moral teachings and see if you agree or disagree with Jesus on hot topics. But my encouragement to you is, Think about the resurrection and start there. That's what James did, and that's what brought him into that relationship with God that changed his life.